or welcome back. Today, we're gonna do some punch needling. Punch. <sighs> punch needling is something that's not very difficult to do. Once you know how to do it, <laughs> like everything, I guess. What I mean by that is more or less getting your materials correct because there are so many different types of fabric, there are so many types of needles, and there are so many different types and weights of yarn. And the difficult part is figuring out exactly what works for you and what you want to make. The Mina Karen punch needle is the one that works for me. And I use the largest barrel that it comes with. The only yarn I can find that works with this, there's two that I really like. Um, one is the Brava sport weight. I think most sport weights will work. I'm not sure. It has to be thin. So like the regular, if you go to Walmart or Target or wherever sells yarn close to you, you probably have like the Love, is it Love or maybe Lion's Mane, Lion's Head, something. But those yarns are going to be too thick to be able to go through. You're going to have to have something that can fit through that hole. So yes, it's got to go through the barrel, which is quite large, but it has to come out this hole. So these, the Brava, works really well. The other one that I have found that you can get more readily available places is Kobu. Kobu. They come mainly in these really pretty pastel colors. They ha don't have a ton of variety. You can get more um, like on Amazon or other online shops, but these will also work. They are different. The finish is different. So you do have to be careful with that um, if that's going to make a difference in your project. The texture is different. Oh, you can see. So one is more shiny, the other less so. That's because this one, the Kobu, is made from cotton and rayon from bamboo. So really great. Love this. This is more colors. You have way more options. And it is 100% premium acrylic. This is what works best for me, these two options. Now let's talk about framing, um, things that you need in order to be able to stretch your fabric. If you're going to go the embroider hoop route, which is totally fine, you need a non-slip one. The little wooden ones don't work super well for me. You might have different luck, but I can't use them. I typically opt for <laughs> embroider hoop, but make sure to get the non-slip. Your other option is to get a frame. Mine has cat hair on it, don't judge me. <laughs> you can get one of these. Um, it's got spikes on it, which is why it has a cover. Um, this helps hold the fabric to keep it really super taut. Um, otherwise, you aren't going to be able to do a lot. Tension is key. You have to keep tension on your fabric. If it gets loose and if it's just like flopping around. You absolutely cannot punch needle correctly on it. It's not going to work. So I use this. I got this from our cherry corner. I got most of my information from our cherry corner after trying myself and failing to figure out what worked for me. I didn't have the right kind of yarn because then you need a thicker yarn than what I had, which I think most of the yarn you're going to get like readily available is going to be like a size four. I think at least that's what I see where I am. Four does not work. I think the, um, this Brava might be like a two. Oh, yes, it's a two. Oh, so these are the stats. If you can find something else that's similar by weight, because I think yarn is done by weight. Um, and I don't understand it. That's why I found something and I stick with it. This was recommended by Archery Corner. Also, you can get these frames from there with the covers on them. And they also sell beginner kits. And then you're going to need some fabric which here's some scraps. Why did I keep this? What am I going to make with this? A bandana. Okay, this is muslin and it's a very, it's linen-esque. I think you can use linen too. I've seen a lot of people use linen with this, but it's a very tightly woven fabric and that's the key here because you are using, if you're using the Mina Karen, it is a smaller punch needle. So you're going to need something that can hold and be really tight that way it grips whenever you go through to pull the needle back out. It keeps the yarn in. If you try using something like this with like monk's cloth or any other larger weave fabric that has holes in it, it's not going to work. It's not going to go very well. 
which is why I use muslin. I can also get this at some local stores. So it's just easier for me instead of having to order everything online. I hate having to order everything online. These are the supplies that I use. So this is the only way I can really show you comfortably how I punch needle because I don't know about the other techniques. So let's get into the setup. Using the items that I'm talking about today, you're going to get results like this. So this is with the, this is with that really cool Kobu bamboo yarn. Um, so you're gonna get results similar to this. And it's got, the texture on it is really cool. It's a lot different from just your standard yarn. Um, I didn't finish the back of this one just because it's my personal use and it was like the first cat one I made and I just didn't feel like finishing it. But if this is something like what you're wanting, you're in the right place. So to start, you need to carefully remove your cover so that you don't get punctured and you don't puncture anybody else. I am actually going to have to start a new roll of my muslin because I've used all the rest of it. So this is what I get. I get this from Walmart, small town. I don't have options. I would love to shop somewhere else, but here we are. As you can see, muslin. This comes with two yards. It's really affordable. I don't remember how much it is because I bought a ton of this in the beginning and I'm still using it, but it's 100% cotton. Um, super great. I love this. This works perfect for me. Perfect. And it's going to be a little unruly. <laughs> so you just have to cut it as you go. But when you cut, try to make sure you're cutting it not haphazardly. Um, cut it to be the size to fit on the frame you need. So that way you're not going in and leaving like small gaps and then you have fabric that you can't use. I made that mistake and I ended up not being able to use quite a bit. Well, I eventually went and got smaller non-stick, oops, non-stick, non-slip. We're not cooking. We are punch needling. <laughs> but that's an option too. It really helps to invest in a good pair of fabric scissors. If you know, you know, but. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, just laying this over it, it stays already, kind of. Yeah, see? I messed this part up several times, several times in the beginning because I didn't get it tight enough. And I cannot stress enough how important that is you are going to struggle. Like this, unacceptable. We need it tighter. So what you'll wanna do, I've got it fixed on the bottom. Now I'm going to take everything else off and I'm going to pull it incredibly tight, pull up, out, and pull it over. I wanna pull it over I push a little, not too much, you will hurt yourself. Now you're just going to do that all over and multiple times, probably on each spot, just to make sure it's tight. Do one side, get it fixed, and then go to the other. I find it easier to work up and down. Okay, it's finally to where I'm satisfied with it. No wrinkles at all. And See, it doesn't, can you see, it doesn't move. So then I just go back through and push. So now we have the basics. If you're doing this with an embroidery hoop, because those are much more readily available, but it's going to be basically the same steps if you're using the embroidery hoop. You're just going to put your fabric on it and then you're going to close it down and you're going to pull the fabric and then tighten it up more and then pull and then keep doing that until you have the same kind of drum-like surface. If you have a design on here before you stretch it, it's going to distort. So that's why you want to do this first and then put your design. For my designs, I'm working on things for a Halloween market coming up. Um, I have a couple of them this month. Very busy month. Um, but I thought it would be really cute. I love drawing potions. So what if we just made some cute little potion bottle coasters? And then we've got a little caramel apple and a jack-o'-lantern. That might be more detail than I can do. We'll see. <laughs> but these are the four designs that I'm going to be doing. 
There are multiple ways to transfer your image if you've drawn them ahead of time. So if you have a stencil or some sort of a template, you just put it behind. It's really easy to see through. So you can just do this as is, you can tape it. What I like to do is use magnets. If this doesn't work for you, you can always get a lamp or something and make your own light box if you don't have a light box to put behind it so it's easier to see. You can also go to the window and put this up to the window and it makes it super easy to see as well. And then you just repeat that process with all of your designs that you want to fit on here. If you're doing the embroidery hoop method, you're probably only going to be able to fit one design per time, unless you've got like a very, very large hoop, which I guess is possible, or you're making smaller coasters. <laughs> okay, I have all of my designs on here. I'm gonna start with the pumpkin. I only put one on here because this might be too much detail. I don't know if I'll be able to get away with this. So to thread your needle, you're going to need to take, well, I take the cap off, you don't have to, because all of my threaders are very curved. Hello? So it's hard to guide it through that. So you're going to take your threader, put it through the end of your needle, push it through till it comes out over here. Now this is the color I'm using first. This is going to be my outline. You're going to put it through the threader and leave a little tail. That way in case it gets snagged on anything going through, you have a little extra to work with. So then you just pull and it comes out here. So you pull it all the way off you pull this back some and now we're going to take the threader put this through that hole grab your tail my phone stopped recording but basically you just pull the yarn back through like you did in the first step and then you pull the wire through the hole and then you're threaded and you're ready so I'm going to start up here and you're just going to punch down and when you pull up, I didn't move that further than just it coming out and scraping the top. So you just want to move over a little and then punch down again. Do not raise this up all the way. If you do, it's just going to pull the thread out of the back. So you raise and scrape and push. Editing Tia here again. So whenever you're pushing through, make sure you push to where the entire needle goes through. If you don't go far enough, your loops are gonna come out. So always make sure you're pushing all the way through with the needle. And that's just what you do until you get to where you need to be. So don't put them too far apart. Don't put them too close together. There's just going to be a sweet spot for your work. If things are too tight, it's going to buckle and make a weird uh, pattern. So just try to avoid that. Um, don't overcrowd places. If you're moving away like a barrel's worth of space, that's perfectly fine. You also see how everything is still flat here. That's what you want. If your fabric is too loose, it's not going to stay and you're going to get these loops that are coming out. You'll have a big string of them and that's not what you want. Um, you make sure it stays in the fabric every time you poke. So you see here, I had it like this and I'm going to turn it because I am turning now. And when it comes up, you see here is the hole. This is the back. So now I'm going to be punching in this direction. I'm turning, so I'm turning the needle. Now we're facing this way. So my needle opening is going to be facing the direction that I am punching. So now we're going to check our work because we've got a bunch going here. So let's see. We flip it over, I left my needle in, hello. But you can see we have a bunch of loops and there are no holes, there's no disconnect and that's exactly what we want. So this, where they're all touching, this looks perfect. I love this, this is exactly how I want it to look. 
and this is real time. This isn't sped up or anything. And make sure you're pushing all the way in. That is so important. If you're not pushing all the way in, you're not going to have uniform loops. And ultimately, you know, that's what I want. There are methods where you do want different loops, but typically you want everything to be very uniform. Okay, so I'm back to an area that meets. So what you're gonna do is take your finger, put it on your yarn and pull this out. You don't want to just pull it straight up because you're going to end up pulling all of your hard work out. So I leave a little bit and cut. And then just to double check, everything is still there. So it doesn't look like much now. Once we get the other color in, it will look good. Actually, do I want to do the outline or do all of this the same color? Okay, I'm going to finish up this outline and then I'll be back. Okay, I have finished the outline. And this is what we have. I think it's super cute. I think I am going to do the same color inside, but before I decide on that, oh, there's a gap there. Okay, so I went a little too far and didn't get something there. I'm going to have to go back and fix that because that's not going to look right. So I'm gonna go in with the orange now in here and fill that in before I decide how I wanna do this. But I am thinking the same color is gonna be what we use for here. When you wanna change colors, you just pull the thread out and then repeat the process with your new color. So again, to thread, just put it through. Pull. Opening up, putting it through, pull. And then I gotta grab the end again. And pull. And then you're ready to go. So, oh, something that I did forget to mention. You wanna make sure you always have a ton of slack on your yarn. Because if it's tight, you're just going to pull the loops up. So make sure this always has slack, always. So I'm going to go close, but I'm not gonna like overlap if that makes sense. And sometimes if you're punching too much at an angle, like I, I do tend to do sometimes, you're going to pull some loops that are already on the other side with the other color. And you just have to make sure that you catch that as soon as you can, <laughs> so you can go back through and adjust if you need to. Sometimes you can cut it and then cut loops, but the good thing is you can always go back at the end and then just place one loop wherever you need it. We have a line here where it didn't stay down, so instead of cutting, I'm actually going to go back. See, it came out of there, and that's because I didn't have enough slack. So what you do there is take the end of your needle and you just rub this, get that out of the way. You just rub your fabric back to where there aren't any holes anymore. You can do this a couple of times. I wouldn't recommend doing it a bunch of times because it starts to wear down the integrity of the fabric and it makes it more susceptible to like not holding very well. So you can make mistakes, but if you make like a bunch it's probably going to be a little too difficult to keep punching in that spot. So you're going to have to pick a battle. <laughs> okay. So this spot is done. Let's look. And this is what we have. Overall, that looks really good. I like that a lot. Okay. So I have fully completed all of the orange and I do think I'm going to go in with the same color for these details and I'm probably up here too. But this is what we have so far. Where is my threader? No, oh, did you find it, Bear? You did? Well, you're lying because I don't see it. Okay, and then there's the stem. So we are done with this now. Now what I like to do you can leave, I just wanted to show you that you can leave the 
stringies if you want to until last. I would highly recommend cutting them as short as you can. Time for my handy dandy recycle bin. Just cut these all as short as possible because we're going to have to, um, depending on how you want to finish it, you can cover the back in like hot glue, you can use a fabric glue, you can use a spray of fixative, eh, you can have a lot of options, but we'll get there when we get there. So that looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna leave it there. And let's see what we've got on the other side. And this is our finished jack-o'-lantern. I think it is adorable. I love it. Um, there's a couple places I do want to probably touch up a little. I'll probably put an extra outline on it just because I like a faker outline on my coasters. Whenever you do this, there will sometimes be areas that you will need to fix down here. This is a mess, an absolute mess. And to fix it, oh no, I'm really not excited about it. This is gonna be a disaster. You just have to go back in and move things where they're supposed to be. So a lot of times it's because the loops get stuck in each other. So here I can see, I'm gonna have to unthread that. I, I'm not gonna be able to show you, I don't think. I don't know how I would be able to get down there. But basically, the orange punched through the black. So there's a loop going through part of the black. So what now, what I now have to do is go in and pull those out. And a lot of people don't take the time to do this step. And then they complain that their work doesn't look nice and neat. And then they want to know how to fix it. And this is how you fix it because this can happen to everybody. It does happen to everybody. It's a very common thing. And just because it does happen doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong. It just means you punched through something and now you just have to fix it. Some of them though, like this, I don't even know where to start. So I went through and fixed it. And then I did an extra outline pass and I am in love with this. I was so worried that I wouldn't be able to do it, but Sometimes you just worry too much about things and everything just ends up looking beautiful. So this little jack-o'-lantern is adorable. I love it. So it is super early the next day. And we have our red caramel apple, the jack-o'-lantern, three different potions. And I wanted to try three different ways for the corks. I do think I like this one better where you can see where the glass is thicker versus not being able to see and just top and bottom. So I think in the future, I'm gonna go with this one. And then we have a little Grady Smith caramel apple. But now the next step is to glue. Seal. So my method for gluing the back is to just use some sort of a school glue. I use this Elmer's and you just cover the back And then I just smeared around with my fingies. This just helps it get in there and make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, so it is nice and saturated and everything is covered. And then we just move on to the next one. Okay, so they've all been saturated, like super saturated. And now you just let this dry, and then once it's done, you take them off and cut. So I'll check back in after these have all set. Now that the coasters have completely dried, they're very hard. So that way you can't pull the loops out on this side. I mean, they're gonna be felted, so you can't anyway, but it's just to make extra sure you can't pull them out from the front. When you cut, you wanna make sure you've left a little bit of a seam allowance. Um, and I did not leave enough room here or here. Well, for my liking, it'll be fine, but you wanna leave as much space as you can. You want to cut around and leave half an inch at least, maybe to an inch seam allowance around everything. And then what you want to do is go through and cut, make sure you're not cutting your loops, but 
cut little slits in it. We're going to be folding these over and gluing them like that. Now this shape is going to be a little difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut to the shape and then right here, do another one. That way we can try to tuck that up. I should have just made it straight, but here we are. Next, you're going to want to take a hot glue gun. I have the Gorilla glue gun and I have like the extra strength sticks in here. And what you're gonna do is just glue on the inside a little bit and then flip this over. Pull it tight, but not super tight and push it down. Be very careful. Be very careful. And when you're pulling them over, you're wanting to pull them far enough to where you can't see them from the top, but you also don't want to pull them too far because if you pull too far, you might get some gapping here and it'll roll and you, it's not going to lay flat. So see, if I were to pull that there, that's too far because I can see the fabric. As the glue gun gets hotter and heats up more, I like to use something else other than my fingers <laughs> to push it down to make it stick like super well. I'll do it once just to get it to stick and then I'll use something else because I cannot stand burning my fingers with the glue gun. Okay, and then when you flip it over, you can't see the bottom anymore. And when you're done, you can lint roll them to get all of the glue strings and the debris off of them. I got this felt on Amazon. It's just a big sheet of gray felt, but you can use the little squares that you can find at craft stores. Some glue. <laughs> Any kind of felt backing will work. So I've laid them out. This is my project table. It's a little messy, but I've laid them all out with how much room I need for everything, and then I'm gonna go on and cut it. Okay, so I'm set up outside. I've got a box. This is a pizza box. We had pizza last night. <laughs> um, just laid everything out again to make sure I know where it's going to go. The glue that I use is the Gorilla Spray Adhesive Heavy Duty. Upon further reading, you're supposed to let it sit. Don't know if you can see that, but you're supposed to let it sit for one to three minutes. Okay, it's been a minute. I like to try to pull it up a little, the felt. Um, that way when I cut it, it's going to really hide any extra things around the edges. Do not spray this kind of stuff inside. You want a well-ventilated area for sure, because it is very stinky, very fumy, very bad for you. Okay, so now everything has been glued down some of it didn't stick, well see, like right here, I'm going to have to go back through because that doesn't want to stick very well. I'm going to use my glue gun and we're going to just reattach some things that didn't quite stick. Okay, everything has been glued down and checked 
we are all good. Um, the spray glue, like I said, it's totally not necessary. I just wanted to try it. And so far it worked on one project. These, it's stuck mostly, but some of them just didn't stick. I'm not sure why, I'm sure it's my error. But you can just use glue, glue gun on all of it. So what we're going to do now is cut along the edges and I'm sure, well, no, it looks pretty good. Sometimes I have to go back through with my glue gun. Oh, so like right here, because the very edge of stuff doesn't get stuck down and then you just go through and then restick it. So that's not a big deal at all. Um, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go on and do that before I cut this one closer. All edges are firmly glued down and now we are ready to trim. So all of the corners are glued. I do a lot of mine, or I try to do a lot of mine to where the felt meets the yarn. That's not always the case. Sometimes you will have where you can see the edges and that's okay because no one's gonna be looking at that part of the coaster. But this is with it trimmed. Now all that's left is to clean up and all you need for the cleaning up process is a lint roller. And ta-da, your coaster is complete. You can go back through and double check things. So it didn't get all of the little scraps and I'm not gonna be able to get some of this because this is from the spray adhesive off. So what I might do is just trim a couple of the outside um, threads. That way we can get rid of a little bit of that. But again, this, it's not visible from the front. It's just on the underside. I think it's cute. I was worried it was gonna to be too much detail, but it ended up working out great. So let's clean up the rest of them. And here are all of the finished pieces. I think they are so cute. I love how they came out. Uh, I do have a theory. This one, it's, maybe you can see that I can push down on it a little. It's a little bit bowed. So I think with this one and the other apple, I did it too close together because it was such a large area and I was just trying to fill it quickly and honestly might have just overpunched it a little. Um, not that there's a problem with that. It's fine. I mean, you can still, everything's fine. But I think I could have spaced these out a little bit more because these didn't do it at all. These came out perfect. Not that this isn't, it's just, it could have been more flat. But they are so cute. I really like the potion bottles. I was worried. These are so cute. I love them so much. But these are all of my finished coasters and I have walked you through the process on making them. I hope that you learned something in this and I hope that maybe, so a lot of people have questions about finishing them and the backs. I hope this helps you. I know that finding a needle in the right size yarn is one of the hardest things to do. So if you try this method, it will work for sure because it's the yarn that I use with the needle and everything that I make. And if you do make some and you use any of the information that I've given, tag me on social media. My handle on everything is Meowski's Art. I would love to see some things that you all make. So I hope this helps you and I can't wait to see what you make and I will see you next time. Bye.